In this video, we're going to be going over just reviewing the main things in our topic, in our unit bioenergetics. Bio, which means life, energetics referring to energy, how energy is transformed in different life processes. The two processes we talked about in this unit were photosynthesis and cellular respiration, both of which are chemical equations. So I just want to take a minute to go over the parts of a chemical equation. For any chemical equation, we have reactants on the left of the arrow, and we have products on the right of the arrow. Chemical equations are read from left to right. Reactants are things that I start with, and products are things that I end with. All this arrow means is produces. Okay? Also, if you see the word use or you see the word remove from atmosphere, that is just referring to a reactant of a chemical equation. If I see the word release, that means that I'm referring to a product of a chemical equation. So now that we've reviewed that, let's go back to our two main chemical reactions for this unit, photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Photosynthesis, of course, occurs in the chloroplast. And this is something that plants do. Cellular respiration occurs in the mitochondria. And cellular respiration is done by plants, but it is also done by animals. Where did it go? Okay. So I'm just going to put a little person here. So we do cellular respiration all the time. So let's go into these different parts. Every time that you see the words either photosynthesis or cellular respiration, you should be writing the chemical equations. Now we have a little acronym for them for photosynthesis. It's WOC-OG. That means that my reactants of photosynthesis are water, sun, and carbon dioxide, which produces oxygen and glucose. For cellular respiration, my reactants are oxygen and glucose that produces water, ATP, and carbon dioxide. Okay? Let's go and see how this actually works together. You'll notice that I've drawn this kind of in a cycle. I'm going to show you how this actually works. So for photosynthesis, we know that plants do that. If you ever want to keep a plant alive, you know that you have to put it near a window so that that plant gets sunlight. After... You also need to make sure that you water the plant. <laughs> ah! That's not what I wanted. Okay. You need to make sure that you water the plant, and then also that plant is going to get some carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Okay. Those are the things that are going into photosynthesis to make it happen. Now, what comes out of photosynthesis? Well... That would be oxygen, and that would be glucose. So plants are super important because they're actually producing the oxygen that we as humans breathe, and we need oxygen to survive. They're also producing glucose, which is simply sugar. And sugar is food. So sugar isn't just a candy bar. We have sugar in bread, so any kind of carbohydrate. So that's bread, that's pasta, that's fruit. Anything like that, that's what plants are responsible for making. Now, they don't make it for us. They make it for themselves, and then we steal it. But such is life. For cellular respiration, I've made this oxygen and glucose. That oxygen and glucose then goes actually into the mitochondria, and this can all happen in a leaf because they, plants do both, but humans do it too, that we can take an oxygen and glucose that goes into the mitochondria we produce then water and carbon dioxide, and then we, cellular respiration also produces something called 
ATP. That's that really long word that stands for adenosine triphosphate. Okay. One last thing. Because this is called bioenergetics, I want to review the actual energy transformations that are occurring in this process. For photosynthesis, I am starting with radiant energy from the sun, and that is being turned into chemical energy, which is stored in glucose. Okay, I mean, you know, when you eat a candy bar, when you eat bread, like, you get energy because it has that sugar in it. Like, you've all experienced that, I'm sure, in one way or another. You have to eat to live. Um, for cellular respiration, I'm actually converting chemical energy to another form of chemical energy. It sounds a little bit confusing. But I'm taking the chemical energy that was stored in glucose, and then I'm simply converting it to another form, which was ATP. These were the energy transformations that occur in both processes. You'll notice that this is a continuous cycle. So I start, all of this energy comes from the sun, and then I can produce oxygen and glucose, which then produces ATP water carbon dioxide. That water carbon dioxide is used again in the chloroplast for photosynthesis, and the cycle continues and continues, and my energy keeps being transformed. 